Racism in French Language Curricula, a very brief introduction by me, Cécile Tresfel. I am assistant professor of French at Williams College, and my email is ct7 at williams.edu. Hi, I'm Cécile, a white French professor at Williams College. In the past year, I have, like many of my colleagues, awakened from what Sonia René Taylor refers to as our collective slumber. In an Instagram video from June 7th, 2020, she reminds us, I'm sitting here in this reflection about how confusing it is as a black person to see white people wake up to the nightmare you've been living in forever and then rush to get on the train. There is a cost to your sleeping, and that cost was taken out of the lives of black people and people of color all over the world. Your slumber was not free. You should wake up and get to work like, let me find out what I missed. So welcome to Awakeness. We've been up and now you have to catch up and you need to catch up with great self-sufficiency. Glad you're awake, get to work. So this presentation is me catching up and finding out what I missed. And it's meant as a conversation starter with those of you who are also waking up. In order to develop sustainable anti-racist pedagogies for the French language classroom, I believe that it is important to first identify and name the different ways in which our field is racist and how we as instructors have contributed to enforce and normalize this racism. I would like to thank the anti-racist educators from, who, from whom I have learned so much this year. Erica Hart, Sonia René Taylor, Bettin Love, Cornelius Minor, Shea Martin, Liz Kleinrock, Anna Duque, Luis Alejandro Tapia, Terry Cowie, Britt Othern, Tiffany Jewell, Akia Key Gross, Jonathan Rosa, Nelson Flores, Cheryl E. Matias, Cass Minor, Paul Gorski, and Roxana Blancas Curiel, to only name a few. In this brief introductory presentation, I will share a summary of my observations of the way racism permeated my teaching of French. This list is in no way exhaustive, and its objective is to serve as a first step towards a lifelong commitment to anti racist work. The different elements that I will present on are vocabulary describing one's identity, vocabulary describing one's origins, textbooks, thematic organization, textbooks, representation, movies, French banlieue and the white gaze, pronunciation, accent reduction and glotophobia, and the gender binary. So an important thing to know is that the word race is taboo in France because it is seen as actually conveying racism. The word that was put in the Constitution after World War II has actually been erased from it recently. Because the French Republic relies on a universalist model, there are no statistics about race, which prevents thorough analysis of structural racism. This is a big conceptual and semantic difference between France and the US that is going to be a key element of intercultural competency for students. Grace Lee and Rokaya Diallo explain this difference in episode two of their podcast, Kif Taras, Why is the word race taboo? Rokaya Diallo has also written many articles on the topic, such as this one, France's dangerous move to remove race from its constitution. Additionally, the word noir is also taboo, and many French people use the English word black instead to refer to a black person. And I highly recommend the extra scenes of Amandine Gay's movie Ouvrir la Voix, Speak Up, that are available on YouTube. One segment is entitled Il s'agit d'un black and addresses this issue. This crucial semantic and conceptual difference, if not addressed, becomes a problem as early as in 101 when we encourage students to introduce themselves, describe others, and to work on the concept of identity. This lack of resources to talk about personal identities also shows up in some textbooks modules about one's ancestors. Too often, chapters devoted to one's origins are centered on a European-American model. The American students are asked where their ancestors came from, and the answers only suggest European countries. The vocabulary lists in these chapters often offer no words to name the transatlantic trade of enslaved Africans, no list of African countries, or no words to refer to Native Americans. Most French people and institutions still use Amérindien, whereas Francophone indigenous peoples of Canada use Peuple autochtone, Première Nation, Métis et Inuit, but these words are mostly absent from textbooks. Racism also permeates the thematic organization of textbooks. 
The concept of francophonie is usually isolated in a single chapter devoted to countries where French is spoken, with a few mentions of France's colonial past, instead of being discussed in all its complexity throughout the curriculum. Additionally, there is often a confusion between francophone countries and French overseas territories, also called DROMCOM, ex-colonies that are still part of France and now have the status of departments or regions, such as Réunion, Guadeloupe, Martinique, or Guyane, to only name a few. These territories are very rarely talked about throughout the textbook or only in a tourist way with a focus on food or travel. Another big issue in textbooks is representation. Textbooks usually present black French people in the chapters devoted to francophonie or immigration, maybe sports or music, but rarely in the ones devoted to politics, econom economics, or visual arts, for example. In general, black French people are rarely presented as experts in our curricula. I have added three pictures below, one of Dr. Maboula Soumaoro, maîtresse de conférence à l'Université de Tours, one of Dr. Mam Fatou Nyang, Associate Professor of French and Francophone Studies, and one of Amandine Gay, Film Director. Racism is also present in the way we show movies in our classrooms about the French banlieue that perpetuate the white gaze and are directed by white directors. Mam Fatou Nyang has analyzed this phenomenon in her most recent book, Identité Française, Banlieue, Féminité et Universalisme, in which she analyzes the movie Bande de Filles, directed by Céline Schiama. The way we teach pronunciation also contains uh, racism, especially with regards to accent reduction and glottophobia. Very often we suggest or enforce in our classrooms the idea that there is a proper way of speaking French, which leads to discriminate certain accents that are seen as incorrect or even mocked. Episode 4 of the podcast Parler Comme Jamais, Les Accents ont Toujours Tort, addresses these issues. As a result of this discrimination, many white comedians in France still resort to the use of a fabricated African accent for comic purposes. Black actors and actresses, on the other hand, are often asked to do an African accent in the roles that they are casted for. And I draw your attention again to these extra scenes from Amandine Gay's movie Ouvrir la Voix that are available on YouTube. And this segment is called Fais l'accent européen, do the European accent. Another great resource to study this issue is episode 141 of the podcast We Teach Languages, Accent, Race, Work, and Teaching Pronunciation with Dr. Vijay Ramjatan. Last but not least, there is an institutional refusal to challenge the gender binary in French, although many French language users, linguists, teachers, researchers, and activists have already created non-binary forms and are already using them. I recommend, for example, the works of Alferaz, of Dr. Chris Nicely Sutherland, and at the volume 11 of H. France Salon, Legitimizing, Legitimizing Yell. It does seem important to reflect on the relationship between the gender binary and the history of colonialism and to ask ourselves what is at the root of this resistance in French and in France. And I have added a few resources uh, below on this topic, on the relationship between the gender binary and colonization. So this is it. Uh, here are a few questions. Uh, to live you with. Uh, what were your reactions to this presentation? Did you recognize some of these practices? Can you identify other racist practices in the way French is taught? How does your positionality and ra racial identity affect your practices? If you are a white French teacher like me, what is your plan for the upcoming year? How will you educate yourself, improve your racial literacy, and develop anti-racist pedagogies? And finally, do you have a community who you can discuss these issues with? Merci et bon courage.